premiered on November 7th, 2019, with a general release on November 22nd, 2019. It is a sequel to the 2013 film Frozen, one of the highest grossing animated movies of all time. The sequel had the highest grossing opening weekend for an animated film, and joins a very small group of actual sequels produced by the Walt Disney Animation Studios. Hi, I'm Justin, and across from me is Stella, and this is a discussion on Walt Disney's Frozen 2. To the unknown. Keep We're going into the unknown of the podcast world. Hi, what's up, everyone? Uh, it's a bit frozen outside, actually. So this is a perfect time to do that, huh? <laughs> do this perfect. podcast. Yeah. Um, we were pounded with about 21 inches of yep. snow. And um, perfect time to just kind of cozy up inside and do a podcast on a movie we were able to see before all the snow fell. Um, so it's frozen, too. Very rare that the Walt Disney Animation Studios does a sequel to one of their previous movies. They were usually handled, I'm sure everyone remembers, the direct-to-video sequels, as you do. And they had a bunch of them. And they were all produced by Disney Toon Studios, which is a completely different production facility under the Disney banner. But um, they stopped doing those a long time ago, and then out of nowhere, we started getting uh, more sequels. Ralph Breaks the Internet, and now Frozen 2. Are they just running out of ideas? No, Ralph Breaks the Internet is good. That's true. That was really that was better than the first one. I've never seen the first one. <laughs> Have you not? No. Oh, well, we will get to it on another podcast. But uh, Frozen 2, which I think is uh, one of the most hyped sequels ever, I would say, To a point, I think people were really hoping for a sequel at the time, given that Frozen was as big as it was, even bigger than any other Disney animated movie that had come out in like the last 20 years. But they did start to do a lot of Frozen stuff in between. We had the musical, which I think was released eventually. We had all the extra things they were doing at the parks. And then we had a short film and... Olaf's Frozen Adventure. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I don't remember it. <laughs> I actually don't. I don't, like, I remember being annoyed. I might have been more annoyed because it was a 20-minute short film that was before a movie I was really excited to see, Coco. <laughs> well, I don't remember anything that happens. I remember there was one part where Olaf sings. So there's that. It, the reason you don't remember is because it's boring it there's it's a nothing movie it's the same thing that i felt about uh frozen fever which was oh it's an extension of the first movie but doesn't really do anything i really felt like they were probably saving every idea for the sequel so maybe they were just doing these to hold off people for now i also feel like maybe they just did too much between the first movie and the second one because i feel like the hype did start to die down Maybe the kids who saw the first movie started to get a little too old. um, Because it has been uh, six years now, which is a lot of time for a child. I mean, there were six-year-olds who saw who are now 12, and in a way they might be, oh, I'm too old for that. (laughs) So it's a legit thing. What are your thoughts? We'll just go over them really quick because there will be a podcast in the future on Frozen. But the first movie, what are your really quick thoughts? Um, they have really good songs, and I've probably seen it, like, 50 times. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. It's good. I like it, too. I'm not a... I guess there are Frozen haters out there, but... I, I there's I've I think people one. who I didn't think liked that it got so popular, or maybe felt that there were other... Disney movies that had come out more recently that were better um, than tangled. it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think there's a lot of Tangled fans who take to Frozen 
um, a little harshly, just because it was much more popular than Tangled. Why was it? What was that? Why? Why was Frozen more popular? Yeah. I would say probably because of the time it came out, 2013, that um, winter slate for 2013 was kind of empty. Its competition was Desolation of Smog and uh, the more recent movie Catching Fire, which isn't huge competition compared to what probably Tangled had, which was... Oh, I don't even remember what month Tangled came out in, but I know like a Harry Potter movie was coming out. There was still the Twilight movie. So there were just bigger franchises then. So I think that helps. But also, Frozen had better songs, um, which I know you'll dispute, or some other people might dispute, but... No, I think they have... I like two songs from Tangled, like really, really like. I think they have more... More better. <laughs> more better. <laughs> they have a better variety. They have more songs that I like more. Tangled has like two really, really good ones, and the rest are like okay. And I think the common occurrence to me is as far as Disney movies go, and even other movies, if they have a good soundtrack, that movie is going to do even better, <laughs> which helps a lot. But um, I think that's pretty much what it comes down to is the time it came out, and the songs helped it a lot so people just kind of kept coming back for it i think overall it's still a better movie than tangled also but we'll talk about that at a different time when we get to those movies i like frozen you're a just lot. a tangled hater no. i'm not i'm really i'm really not but <laughs> i i really dig frozen it's a movie i will watch yearly i like watching it either around christmas or january uh it's my my winter movie and it's a. I like how they take a lot of the Disney tropes and they somewhat turn them on their side, but at the same time they pay tribute to them. I like that it has um, Elsa almost in the villain role for a second, but then they don't. They make it a little more complicated than other Disney movies, and I like that. You don't really see that often. It's a sisterly bond movie, which is nice because it doesn't turn into just another guy likes girl you know princess and prince love story like they kind of made fun of that yeah they do different things with it it's very blatant it's uh very obvious what they're doing but it works um and it's super funny i mean i think that movie is actually funny as well really good characters it's just all around really good movie they got lucky i don't really know what they were specifically doing different with this movie but they just did everything right it made sense to do a Frozen 2 because you would be getting the money, but I thought it would be cool to return to these characters because I did like these characters. I liked this story. There's magical abilities in this movie that are very lightly expanded upon, and we could dig into that a lot in a sequel. Now we have Frozen 2. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, you know, I heard this movie was divisive before we saw it. What percent did it get on Rotten Tomatoes? I think it was in the lower 70s. And That's still high. That is still kind of high. And really, shouldn't base anything on Rotten Tomatoes. Even the first movie, I think, only got like an 88 or 83 percent. Like, it wasn't, it didn't like get extraordinary, like almost 100 percent reviews, but taking Rotten Tomatoes out of it, I did kind of hear more complaints about the movie than I heard positives. And anybody who liked the movie wasn't really spilling out what they specifically liked about it other than, well, we just liked it. It was kind of weird because I waited a week to see this and I was starting to question, I'm like, what is in store with this movie? Because I feel like I'd hear the good stuff by now. What the good songs, I'd hear them on the radio already, I'd feel like. I hated this movie. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Like, I actually hated this movie. One out of ten. Um, well, a four out of ten. I guess that doesn't go as low as hate, but I think it has to do with... I expected way more out of Disney in general, and also out of, out of a Frozen sequel with creators who are the same as the first movie. And I walk out of the theater puzzled, not remembering really a thing I watched, but yet also, like, feeling that the pace of the movie was agonizing. And 
thinking the movie was long, but for some reason, once we got to the third act, I still felt like, wait, this is it? This is the end of the movie? Are you serious? Because I was still, I think, hopeful that we were going somewhere with all of this. I didn't feel accomplished at all. It didn't... I feel like... I don't know what was done. I have way more questions than I did get (laughs) answers. There's plenty of movies I've seen in my time where I feel like they don't nail every question down. I mean, and I don't... I'm not the biggest nitpicker on the planet. But I didn't go in with questions. I left with them. I was like, okay, whatever. They're going to expand on it and then wrap it up. No. I was like, what's going on? We are questioning more than ever before. Yeah. And not in a good way. Not in a like, oh, I want to see them expand upon this more. More in a way of like, I don't know why they did these things. And I don't know what they're really revealing even. I mean, and I'm, I'm trying to say I'm the most lenient person on the planet. I loved the Lost finale. So if that tells you how lenient I am, like I... I'm not worried about things being answered. I am all up for the artistry of seeing just beautiful things and not having everything get an explanation. But this movie just doesn't do it right. <laughs> um, where I, I When we left, we had way more just bad things about it than anything. I want to know just right off the bat, though, did, was there anything you thought was good? Anything in the movie? I don't know. I would I can't even say the songs because like I had to listen to them before and I don't really remember them. The song like there's probably two good songs. Mm-hmm. They're not like the first one. The first one where first three songs at the beginning of the movie are all very good, and not that I even love every song in that first movie, but all of them have a variety and a beat to them, and they all work within the film. Not necessarily that I'd go home and listen to them all, but a majority of it I did. I kind of wonder, do I remember those songs more just because they got so much airtime? I didn't see the movie in theaters. I waited a little bit after, so who knows? Maybe I already had heard them and was addicted, but at the same time, I feel like some of those songs from the first movie are just like, even in the way they present them within the film, the way they have the sets playing with the, or with the characters playing with the scenery, the way they kind of have a Broadway-like charm to them. The first one is happier and more upbeat, and this one's kind of like dark. Um, I called it the Harry Potter aesthetic, (laughs) which might be not the best term but like god when they start going through those caves i was thinking this is half blood prince like this is exactly what it feels like right now i mean given that there's also magic in it so that doesn't help me not to change my mind about that um i yeah it's just a darker movie and i think they were trying to go for that but i'm not sure why because it's not like the storyline's darker it's just a darker movie but with the same kind of story, I guess you'd see in the first movie. But I don't know. I I don't know if this qualifies as a story. <laughs> um, but, but finishing off on the songs, yes, there were some I, I I thought were okay. But there wasn't anything in that movie where I was like, I'm listening to this when I go home. I remember them, but I'm mostly I am gonna forget about all these songs unless I watch the movie again. I'd be like, yeah, they did do that. <laughs> Um, I think the animation was better in this movie, like much better than the first movie, whereas the first movie kind of, it was good, but it kind of looked like at times, not that they cut corners, but it didn't feel like as far as I think CG animation had come at that point, you know, especially if you watch like Monsters University, where I think a lot of their, the shadows they do in that movie and a lot of the color tones and, um, just everything like the textures are done better in that movie than if you watch frozen with this movie they put all their money and their time into it with the animation their sets that look very good the trees look very good the characters costumes look like they have texture and movements it works they all look like it's good animation i think it's better than the first um that is its strongest suit i don't know if um, the animation, though, really backs up for what they do with the animation, though. Because a lot of these sets are pretty boring. They just go into the woods. Yep. And a dark cave, and <laughs> the water. 
I was telling you that in the first Frozen, there's a sizable chunk in there where they're just kind of walking through the woods looking for Elsa. And I always say that's the most boring part of the movie. That's what I said, because they have like four songs in the beginning, back to back, and then they just forget for a while. And they did the same thing. They did the same thing here. But not only that, I felt that the part where they go into the woods in the first movie is like the entirety of this movie where so much of it is in the woods and so much of it is like walking around and figuring out things we already know or trying to make mysteries out of things that really aren't mysteries. They, Not that they're treating the audience dumb, but I think they're doing these reveals thinking that we can't like figure it out <laughs> when it's almost like it's almost too obvious some of the things that they do. But it's also like they don't really build much of a mystery. Like, I don't, I don't really know what they're doing with this movie. Like, I, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know what the plot is or, like, the moral of the story. Like, I I don't know what's happened. I don't they even... have, like, ten things going on and then they don't really solve any. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I don't even know how I would explain this movie to someone or spoil it. Because I, the only thing you could maybe spoil is the very end, I, I guess. But it's a thing that you see a mile. You cu- you see it coming from a mile away. Um, what they end up finding out about their ancestry, like it, you see it right from the beginning. You're like, if you know anything about any country's history ever, you would know exactly what they're gonna do. Because we've all been in a history class, we know what they're gonna do. And also, I like that you simplify the subject that isn't that easily simplified. But it's a Disney movie, so I'll give you whatever. But also, there's the other part of the climax, which is like the big, you know, they, they break the dam. That part of the movie, which I guess would have been like really eye opening. Like, oh, you know, they have to destroy their city by breaking the dam, and that's kind of almost beautiful. But then e- they don't. Even though they don't do that, but also. It doesn't come as a surprise because Kristoff basically explains earlier in the movie that's exactly what they're going to do. He's not like, oh, if that breaks, it's going to ruin our city. Haha. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's very, like, very directly at the audience he is saying this. And I just looked over to you and I'm like, gee, I wonder what the ending's going to be. Like, I don't get why they didn't just break it because they evacuated everybody and somehow they ended up back. And I was like, <laughs> when did that happen even? Right. I said about the ending, I said it's kind of like what Thor Ragnarok did. Within that movie, they found out something about their ancestry that, oh, you know, um, Thor's dad actually wasn't a good guy at first. He um, went and slaughtered other uh, planets and such. And uh, in the end of that movie, Asgard needs to be destroyed. Frozen 2 is that. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same plot. The only thing they do different is they don't destroy Arendelle in the end. Elsa comes and saves it. And I don't feel like that was deserved. I I felt like there was meant to be a change here, not only for our main characters, but for the entire city to learn to build and grow like a new foundation because they come from bad history, but they can create a new one. Uh, maybe with these um, people who are natives. That's just what they are. I mean, And they're still separate. Like, they're yeah. still not living together. Yeah, like, I don't even, like, they have them join them at the end, but I, but most of them don't go with them, because Elsa's living with the other ones, and what are you even trying to, like, say here? I don't, I don't understand, are you trying to talk about community? Are you trying to, about, talking about learning from our histories? Because you're not doing either. You're kind of cheating it right now by, Arendelle was an a-hole, they went to here, and then uh, destroyed these people's lands. And then when Anna figures out, oh, our history's been bad, she has to save it. But in the process, Arendelle still gets gets saved. And I'm like, wow, they they there was nothing. Arendelle had to suffer nothing in this movie. Cool. Like, we just learned nothing. <laughs> I mean, does Elsa even know what happened to her pet? I mean, I guess she goes to the history island to figure that out. <laughs> and how does she know what Anna's doing and gets there perfectly in time? Right. I mean... It's a movie, it's fine. That stuff is a movie, but, like, the rest of the... Okay, so, the... <laughs> Elsa starts hearing this voice. She hears this voice, and she decides she has to leave Arendelle, and she's gonna kind of go off on her own, like the first movie, which we're doing that again. It's not like she really learned anything from the first movie, you know, it's just about doing stuff on your own. And they almost kind of go off with that moral by the end, when she goes to the island, and she does discover all this stuff. 
and Anna saves her, but I feel like Elsa never learns anything from that about, like, oh, you need people by your side. She just is no, like... No, because she pushes Anna away again in right. this one. Like the Almost in the one. exact same fashion as the first movie. It was the exact same. Almost at probably the same point in the runtime. <laughs> yep. Um... She hears the sound, and then they all decide to go venture off into this mist, which is, I mean, if you've seen Annihilation, it, it's Annihilation. That's what it is. It's just this weird place that if you walk into it, it's got magical properties. And they find that the Arendelle people and the native people, which I didn't learn their actual names, but that, that is what they are. And that's what the metaphor they're trying to go with with this movie. And it's a terrible metaphor because they don't do it right. They find that they've been in this mist for 30 years, and that think they're still fighting each other it didn't really seem like they were it seems like at first when they run into each other they're like yeah yeah they got their swords out but then they don't do anything and they almost and then they're all buddies having like a fire together i was like wait it's just kind of like they have a funny back and forth i'm like Haha, just like real history like <laughs> like this is just like what i don't even know what it happened here because i feel like that just opens up more questions about like well how have these people kind of looked like they haven't aged at all? How did also, ha- why are there four soldiers and how many of the other people? Yeah, you, you don't really get an estimate for either. It so, just, I mean, the other people won. I, I guess, yeah. And then the Arendelle people have been hiding maybe this whole time? or no, they can't get out. Uh, well, but it doesn't, it doesn't make sense! But they're friends, but they're enemies. And, and they live together. How have they been living in this mess? I don't know. You could ignore maybe all that and just be like, well, it's a movie, you know. I've ignored things like that before. But <laughs> they go off from the mist, and then uh, Elsa's still hearing this voice, so she needs to go further and further. But Anna's like, no, you have to watch yourself. You can't go too far. She's like, I must take it too far. How many times do they say too oh, far? God, how many times do they say, are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> You pointed that out to me, that they keep asking that question. To they said characters. it twice, and then the next time, she's like, I've been better. I'm like, okay, they keep switching like it up. doing it over and over again. <laughs> and uh, They eventually find the boat that their parents crashed on, and they realize that they were also heading towards this voice when they got lost in that shipwreck in the first movie. And they were going that way because they were trying to figure out what to do about Elsa's powers. Elsa realizes that... She becomes very sad because she kind of blames herself for her parents even going off and then dying in this boat. And I thought, wow, this is like the most real part of the movie. And they brush over it in like five seconds and then just kind of move on. And we don't really get any kind of, um, you know, like catharsis from that. Like it just kind of is done and we move on and we forget about any of that happening. And you just don't feel any emotion there. And then that's the part where Elsa leaves, and she goes to this island where she's hearing the voice, and when she gets to the island... What? (laughs) I don't even know. What was that? What was it? What? What was the island? What what is that? Is it the island from Lost where there's just no uh, no questions need to be answered? What? I know it's my second time I've brought up Lost, (laughs) but I'm saying, what was that island? Can you explain to me what that island was? It was an ice cave, and it was her, I guess, right? Was it her? It was her. It was her memories? No, it wasn't her memories, because it was her parents' memories somehow, too, because Olaf said ten times in the movie, water has memory, that's how she could see all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And the parents didn't make it, make it there, so why are their memories way over there? Right. And the voice was her. Well, because they also bring up at one point that there were... Uh, there's four spirits, but then someone looks at the pattern on this scarf that the mother owned, which we'll get to that, but <laughs> on the pattern you see that there's four diamonds, but in the middle there's a fifth diamond, and someone's like, see, there's a fifth spirit, and you know, there's there's water, which we see a horse in the movie that's like water, which I think is just water shaped as a horse, I don't think there's actually any living being there, and then there's air that is just air, nothing else there's the ground which is or earth which is just the rock guys too which same thing i don't think there's like a living thing there and then there's a salamander that runs around and he's fire <laughs> and i'm like oh so he he just but he's alive yep okay so the rest of them are like actual spiritual entities but then we just have a salamander who's on fire <laughs> 
that that will sell products i guess (laughs) but then you know they'll make but there's a mysterious fifth element i'm like it's elsa like you i mean um i wonder uh, if it's ice (laughs) it doesn't even take actually it doesn't even make sense because like ice is just water so that element's already been taken like uh, fire and ice uh, there's a fifth spirit i'm like okay we know who it is and then we spend like a half hour of the movie like why did the people who live there not put it together when they saw her right this They've is, lived their their entire life. So then Elsa you when stressed it's out. It's just it's just because I don't even get it. Because then Elsa goes to this island and then she kind of just discovers based on the very the the water memories and such. And I guess this island just can do whatever it wants. That um, the people were fighting. Um, they were getting along at first, but then a very grumpy head of Arendelle decided. The grandpa. No. Yeah, he didn't. The, well, I was gonna reveal that because it's so revealing. Oh whoops. Uh, the grandpa. Uh, actually wasn't trying to get along with those people. He didn't like that they had these magical abilities. But they don't really have the magical abilities. The The area is magical, and they just kind of use it to their advantage. But he didn't like that either. So then that's why he built the dams, because it started secretly killing their um, their land, and then the magical abilities got ticked off and kicked them all out. But not all of them out. Some of them stayed in the mist, which... What... And then <laughs> kicked them out. I thought it trapped them all in. Well, trapped some of them in, but a lot of them got out. But a lot of them ran away, and some people died. And then, uh, like for instance, the son, or you know, who ends up being their father, escaped. And then the mother, who we find out came from the native people, which that just adds another thirty questions because you're like, well, she's white, and those other people I don't think are meant to be white. It doesn't seem like they're going for that. So how she came from them, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she'd also we don't know if she has magical abilities we don't know if any of them have magical abilities but then she has Elsa and she has magical abilities but Anna doesn't and I'm just like w- what are the rules like what are the rules here <laughs> I'll try to ignore it all but you know there's a point in the movie where they're doing the magical water memories thing and they see um, a girl saving their father and they recognize their father right away they don't even look at the girl and the characters go off and do something for five, ten minutes, and then they come back and they're like, that's our mother! No, they go to the boat and they find their mom's handwriting and they're like, this is mom's handwriting. Looked at the mom, didn't know what she looked like, but knew what the dad looked like years before. Right, when he was a little boy. And it's and like... And blonde then, and right. had brown hair when he had them. And we don't know how they're able to even know what he looked like as a little boy. And I know they don't have a photo of him anywhere because the one Arendelle soldier who was stuck in the mist was very surprised by the invention of photography while he was stuck in the mist. So that's a new thing. That's a newer thing that was invented. So they don't have a photo of him when he was a boy. There's no way. So how did they know what he looked like? And if they knew what he looked like, why didn't they recognize the mom? (laughs) I'm like, and they come, seriously, they come back and then they act like it's a new reveal. And it was weird because I'm like, is the movie tricking me? Because... When I saw that there was a woman who saved him, like a mysterious woman, I was like, maybe we'll meet this woman. Hey, maybe this woman is the mother of Elsa, but not the mother of Anna. And, you know, and then he married some other woman who ended up being their mom. Disney wouldn't do that. But, they, but I'm like, maybe they're doing that. And the only reason I'm thinking that is because, because I'm sure anybody's like, well, that's the mom, obviously, Justin. I'm like, yeah, I know it's obvious. I but- thought it that whole time when she, like in the beginning, when she was singing that song to them, I was like, how would you know this if you weren't there? Right. Then they were like, this is our dad. I'm like, is this not your mom? Well, that's the only reason why I was thrown off, because they didn't recognize their mom. And then I was confused because he was like, oh, this kid, this girl saved me. I was like, you don't even know who it was either? Who is this? And it was doing one of the, like, it's like the movie pointed their finger at me, and they're like, who do you think that woman is? I'm like, well, I thought it was the mom, but they they don't notice her, so it must not be their mom. And then they go off, do their thing for ten minutes, they come back, they're like, oh, it's that mom? And then the movie's like, ha ha, it was their mom, we tricked you. And I'm like, we didn't really trick oh. me. I'm like, why are the characters so stupid? I'm like, better, yeah, I, I shouldn't even blame them for being, because it actually makes sense they wouldn't recognize her, because why do they recognize the dad? <laughs> Like, seriously, it's just stupid. Like, and it's like, you you would think, maybe I'm being too harsh on this movie, but am I really? Like, this is... When it has about ten plot holes, you kind of have to be. It's not even, like, plot holes. Like, this is the part in the movie, where, this is a sizable chunk of the movie. Not like, you know, the movie's, like, probably around two hours, a little less than that. 
And this is a 10 minute segment that we take to essentially learn knowledge that we already know. We already know this. They see the dad, and then they come back and they notice it's the mom. We know all this. Wait, I have a question. So when they first get there and they're having like that little campfire and she has her mom's shawl that has all those element things on it. Uh, a shawl you remembered, good job. What? I didn't know it was a shawl. No, you, you remembered, good, good job. <laughs> and they were talking about it and they're like, oh, fifth element. Why did they not put that together? Like our mom lived here. No, she just stole a shawl from one of them. Yeah, well, exactly. Because they did ask. They're like, how did you get one of these? And she's just like, I don't know. It was my mom's. I'm like, okay. It's like they keep dropping all these little hints about a mystery that's not really a mystery. Because that, that is what this movie is basically building its whole plot on, is this mystery of the parents. But then it goes into a new thing. Yeah, and then once it figures out, that, oh, the mom did this and they were on the boat and they were looking for Anna or Elsa, it's a secret to her powers... Once we get all that done, then they just kind of do a completely different thing because they still have the voice to figure out. And then when they go find it, it doesn't really do much. I don't care if she went to the island and just discovered that it was magical properties there. And it was just this like crazy scene where she's like, show yourself. And it's just like a long and it's a cool sequence. Um, not nearly as creative as I was hoping, but it's like a really cool sequence. But... It's like, this is our climax, kind of, in a way, before, you know, the final climax of the movie. But this is, like, supposed to be the big scene. And I'm like, but I feel like we're not learning anything right now. Like, it's all built on something that I feel like the audience already figured out. And even then, even if we were just too smart to figure it out, or even if that was the whole mystery, there wasn't really anything more, it's not really that interesting. I feel like little kids, like little, little kids would not get it because I was like okay so it's her now what and I was like am I missing something because I was even confused <laughs> yeah well because they don't really give an idea of what like I said they don't really establish any kind of rules or context to this they, other than like oh well the mom and dad were together during the fighting period and she saved him and that's why they came together but they kept it a secret all these years but really, that's what's going to bring the people together. And it's actually Elsa, because she's like a merging of both. She's the magic of them, but she's from Arendelle. So it's bringing them together, which, yeah, I haven't seen that movie before. But even if you wanted to tell that movie again, um, I, I don't know, have it more like of a big impact for the final, you know, reveal of the mystery or kind of, I, I don't know, I thought it was building towards something bigger. And, and it really doesn't. Like when I thought we were going to this cave, I felt like everyone already knew at that point that, oh, she's the fifth spirit, right? And she's from both sides of this fight. So when she comes here, it's going to be like a, this big moment to reveal something else about her powers or something even bigger or something even, you know, great within this cave that maybe they can all benefit from. And instead, she cracks through the ice and freezes. And it's like... For why? Why did she do that? And why did she do it the exact same way Anna did in the first one? Why? 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 Why did the Ice Queen freeze? That's embarrassing. So, Anna needs to save Elsa again, like the first movie. Yeah, she pushed her away and doesn't even know what's going on. And then a character freezes again. And then they forget about Kristoff the whole movie. Right. Oh, and then they... Yeah, oh, we, I, I mean, we're talking about the story <laughs> so far, but, like, the characters. Um, there's this big idea in the movie about change and growth change and growth and you know the first song is things never change around here and that, i know that's not how the song goes but <laughs> things never change and then they start going into the mist and olaf's like oh i feel like we're gonna change in here and i'm like uh -huh, i'm i'm the moral of the story oh, i'm telling everyone what's gonna be about even though i feel like they didn't earn it but <laughs> and then his song which is like oh, I'm getting older, and I'm changing. And it's like, okay, I get it. It's supposed to be a big transformation movie where the characters change and they evolve. They didn't. They, no. they don't. They don't really change. Even when Anna, I feel, when she's going through her big moment after two characters are lost, Olaf dies pretty much in the movie. And um, not for real, though. He melts. Yeah, he melts. So, of course, he comes back. Um and Elsa, he says that Elsa is in trouble, so that gives the idea that Elsa may be dead or something else as well. So Anna knows she's alone. And that's like a big depressing song she's supposed to have, but she's trying to keep herself up to keep the fight going. 
But at that point, I'm like, Anna really hasn't done anything. Like, I know she just lost people, but overall, I feel like there's not anything more that she needs to prove right now or she's really been through anything worse than the loss of these people. Or maybe the loss, because we don't even know if Elsa was lost. She shouldn't know. But <laughs> I was like, I feel like this moment's not earned. And also, Kristoff. <laughs> what, they slapped him in the face with this movie. Yep. Um... They have him doing this thing the whole time where he's trying to propose to Anna. It's very boring, and you've seen it before in every movie. They don't do anything different here. Every single rom-com you've ever seen where they do stuff like this or any sitcom, Rescuers Down Under, it's it's the same thing. You've seen it. You, you mean their sequel? Yeah, right. sequel? the other Disney sequel they did. Yeah. Which, also, that Disney sequel actually did it better, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um... And they have him trying to propose the whole, and it's comedic antics, and then he gets an 80s ballad, which is actually a good part in the movie, even though it's weird. No, it was embarrassing. It did not fit, and it went on for so long, and that song is actually good, and I was like, but what are you doing? What's going on, even? <laughs> and he eventually, I think Disney even thought this bo- this idea was boring, because then they just drop it. Kristoff just kind of disappears for the rest of the third act. He's just not around. At least 20 minutes. And it's like... Probably way more. I'm not, like, entirely against it just because they were trying to focus more on Anna and Elsa, but I feel like the stuff they focused on with them wasn't enough to warrant cutting out Kristoff. Um, They didn't really give Kristoff anything to do here, and they even try to introduce some new characters, but they don't really give them anything either. This isn't a sequel that fits in, like, new ca- characters in either a good way or a bad way. They just kind of don't. They don't do either. They make other characters uh, take less of a role in the movie. Olaf, I think, is there probably more than Kristoff. And to me, I feel like he's more annoying in this movie. He's very much what I thought he was going to be in the first movie. In this one, I'm like, yeah, this is what I thought he'd be in the first movie. Kind of annoying and a little bit too much. But then they give him, a, like, a sad death scene, which... Because they keep shoving the, like, oh, I'm mature thing down his throat. And I was like, you said it already ten times. Right. Like, say something else. But I they haven't, know. like, there there wasn't, like, any journey for him specifically other than just singing that song. It's not like there's anything that he needs to go through to mature or to change or grow up. And... <laughs> It's also, like, how many times did they do a flashback of the first movie? Oh, well, I was going to get to that. Um, <laughs> this movie, this sequel, has a really weird addiction to the first movie. And you may think that's a weird complaint, because you're like, well, it's a sequel. Of course it's going to reference the first movie. I'm like, yes, sequels do that. This movie literally plays scenes from the first movie. Not just... Okay, they do, like, all three. They do um, referring to events, whereas Olaf tells the entire story of Frozen as, like, a joke to the characters that they just meet. Mm -hmm. Funny enough scene, but to me, I'm like, this shouldn't all be in the movie. Also, I was like, this could have been a funny trailer. Why didn't they do this as a trailer? I think it would have been much more funny and appealing than whatever trailer they threw together. But then they have flashback scenes during the 80s ballad, which... For the tone of the song they were doing there, I'm like, it makes sense. But once again, like you said, this doesn't really fit with the rest of the movie. (laughs) And it feels really odd. Like, I feel like the writers and producers were so bored with this movie, but then they were like, I want to do an 80s song, so let's just fit this sequence in too. And in the cave. And then the cave. Because if you didn't think, because I excused the other two, because I'm like, there's at least a reasoning to it. But here, when they go to the cave... We are literally seeing not just big moments from the first movie, but like little tiny moments, like the um, mayor of Wesselton, Weaseltown. Um, he's doing his little like chicken dance. We see Hans uh, first meeting Anna. We see the Let It Go sequence where like Aunt Elsa is like looking at it and she's embarrassed. And I'm just like, but why are you embarrassed of that? <laughs> it's meant to be a little quick joke, I think. Where they're like, ha ha, she sees it and she's just embarrassed yeah, to see herself. Yeah, but she found herself then. I know, I'm like, And that's... now she needs to find herself again, so she's embarrassed. By the first time? finding herself first, and then 
What? Because, <laughs> I mean, I guess people could use the argument of, like, yeah, well, she found herself, but, you know, she did it wrong because she was supposed to be with family. I'm like, well, at that point in the movie, actually, she wasn't in the wrong. She was finally free to embrace her power that she held back on for many years. That's actually a big moment in the film. That's why it works so well. Why is Elsa suddenly looking at it and embarrassed? I, you could make the excuse that she's just embarrassed to see herself in these uh, flashbacks, but no. I'm like... That's a lot to interpret there. I'm like, is she embarrassed by her past self for doing that? Which, what does that say about the character? Also, when they do that flashback, some of them, like... It's not even just her mom's memories that are, like, like the snowman type thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, that guy she was dancing with. What's his name? Uh, the mayor of Weaseltown. Yeah, he's a snowman, but the rest are, like projected on the wall oh yeah like there's a and point it was like weird well because at first it was all projections and then things like started popping up i was like this is once the song much. ends then it becomes like all the water memories come together to form like snowmen and then all the scenes are playing out like snowmen so you're not only seeing like like film stock <laughs> flashbacks you are seeing literal like 3d recreations of everything and i'm like this is stupid like, why, what, like, can't we do anything new with this movie? Not only do we have to take the characters down literally the same path as they did in the first movie, but now we're literally just seeing stuff from the first movie. Like, you could have just played Frozen. I probably would have been happier. <laughs> like, it just felt sad. I'm like, this is just not, it's like, it's nostalgic for the first movie, but it hasn't been long enough. Like, if they did this in a sequel that came out, like, 20 years later and also had a better story, I feel like it'd be a little more warranted. You know, it would hit me a little more in the nostalgia feels, maybe. But I feel like this is... Well, I did it with Ralph Breaks the Internet, but if you're... Didn't, if you didn't see the first movie, why are you seeing this one? We don't need a recap. Like, you, most people have seen it. If not, I don't know why you're here. Right. <laughs> it's a big thing. Frozen was huge. Why are we doing it again? <laughs> Everybody saw Frozen, and yeah. they should know that. So what's the point? I don't know. But it's... I'm sure it, it, it addresses the story. It works with the story. But it doesn't. It really doesn't. It Because there's not a story. There's not anything going on here. There's not a big change. And even when we hit the ending, uh, we already kind of went over the dam and how I kind of disagree with that. But that's even supposed to be a big moment in the film, but it's so rushed. Like, Anna figures it out in, like, two minutes. Like... There's a, there's a dam. The dam's hurting us. I gotta break the dam. And then she runs and does it with the rock monsters. And it's super quick. Like, and Kristoff comes back. And Kristoff's like, like help. here, let me help. And then she's like, Arendelle people. It's like, we're not gonna let you break the dam. And I was like, please. And they're like, okay. It's, it's like, you guys have been here for 30 years defending the hell out of this. And that's it. Yep. Just, okay. And, and like, then it doesn't matter because Elsa saves it. They break the dam. Uh, Elsa wakes up from her frozen sleep. She stops it, and it should be a real cool moment in the film, but like I said, I don't think they deserved it. Um, I think they could have built on something way cooler there, had them travel to a different place to start a new Arendelle. Where they all live in the forest? Right. But I guess they don't deserve that, which, I mean, they don't. I don't think they do, but, like, that's the thing. Maybe actually bring them together. End of the movie, Anna becomes queen, and Elsa decides to do what she should have been doing the whole time. Because at the beginning of the movie, she's still a shut-in, which is, like, the one thing I did kind of, like, I like that they did that, because I'm like, I'm glad they didn't suddenly make her all open, and like, hi, I can talk to people now. I'm like, no, I'm glad that she's still, like, a nervous introvert about things, because I'm like, you don't, just because you change doesn't mean you completely can, like, change things like that. She's not a completely different character. She's just a shut-in at the beginning. Um... And at the end, she feels that she should, she would be better off in the magical forest helping their people. And, but once again, I was like, I felt like this all happened very quickly. And I feel like there wasn't any fight for this to happen. Like, Anna and Elsa are very cool with it. Anna's more troubled by Elsa just running off on her own the whole time. But there isn't, like any kind of real deep dive into why she's so bothered about it. Maybe she's scared about losing her sister or losing not having her at the palace anymore. And you know what movie did this way better? Hmm. Ralph Breaks the Internet. When um, Vanellope kept running away from Ralph and, you know, Ralph wanted her to stay but it was for very selfish reasons and they finally did have to split up even though they really, you know, Ralph didn't want it to happen but he had to accept that Vanellope had better things elsewhere and they just had to do it. And it was kind of heartbreaking but it works and you're like wow that was very 
like beautiful what they did there very relatable to real life like that's a something i've never seen in the kids movie and they did it so good and then this movie for one rips it off it was only a year ago and it's like wow you're just doing that story again but also uh you know there's room to do that story again because like i said hasn't been done much in a lot of kids movies they do it bad here <laughs> it's just I not feel like it's very rushed and like anna doesn't really care she's what? just like okay this is our life now it's I'm like, oh. Yeah, but do you remember the salamander? It was very interesting. Do you remember the rock monsters? Yep. They seemed like monsters, but then they shook hands with Elsa at the end of the set. And they We're looked exactly now. like the first monster. Yeah, they looked like the snowman the, from yeah. the first movie. Yep. But just rocks, because I guess, you know, that worked in the first movie, so we need to bring that back. But rocks. Because, you know, this is the fall. It's not winter this time. I like the outfits they get. That was what nice. outfits? Like, all the characters. They get a variety of outfits in the movie. So that was cool. I don't um, think they're as memorable or as good as the first ones. Um, Olaf does charades, and he does that uh, dance part, that walking part that Elsa did in the first movie that apparently a lot of moms complained about as, it's it's sexualizing that character for our children to watch. And then they have Olaf do it in this movie. <laughs> And I was like, I feel like that's Disney kind of doing a middle finger to those moms. But, <laughs> um, I, and there's not a villain in this movie, which mm -hmm. I feel like would have been a lot more interesting that they didn't have a villain, except now I'm watching it, I'm like, maybe they could have benefited from a villain. <laughs> maybe could have given it a little more to work with. I... You have to watch the movie for what it is, but I feel like every single idea that I could literally think of, it would be more interesting. I talked about how Kristoff should have been the people, per, the one who came from those people, um, from the native people, you know, back when they fought and everything, and then they had to split apart. Because I'm like, Kristoff has no family, and we've never really gone into that. He's just suddenly taken care of by the rock trolls. Mm -hmm. and And the rock trolls were not a part of that. Really? Mm -mm. Yeah, they because they they didn't even really know about what happened in that mist, mm -mm. or that people were still alive. Um, but don't worry, we see old man, you know, rock troll at the end, and he's like, "We did good today." <laughs> yeah. You know when he's like when we're, when they're at the end and Arendelle gets saved, you see the rock troll, and he's like, "We did good today." <laughs> um, but yeah, like that would have been interesting if Kristoff came from them just because they would have given Kristoff more to do. But they didn't do that. Um, I went in very like open and very excited because like Frozen is good. Mm -hmm. They, I was like, it's not going to be as good, but it won't be bad. <laughs> and now I just, I'm bashing it the whole time and I feel bad. I do. But I was very excited. I, I was. And I'm like, but I don't think it was like me overhyping it either because I did expect to know that it wasn't going to be as good as the first movie. But I was like, I like these characters enough. And there's plenty of, uh, you know, average to bad sequels that I've still enjoyed because I still just like characters enough. And I like to see certain people play those characters again. And in this case, I was like, watching it, is it's like the worst thing that I think a movie can do, or a sequel anyway. And it actually made me question if the characters in the first movie were really as good as I made them out to be. I'm like, were they really as funny, or as interesting, or as, as compelling as I made them out to be? Or were they really just kind of cardboard cutout emotions for what this movie wanted to put out? Like... It just made me, and it's like, I shouldn't be questioning that right now, but here I am. I'm like, I'm going to rewatch the first movie and really pay attention now and be like, do I really like these characters? <laughs> um, and it's like, I don't, everything that kind of happened was just a disappointment. And like I said, even the animation, while good, didn't give like a lot for us to watch because they went for a darker tone for a story that's not really dark. No. And twice they had Elsa like doing whatever with her powers in pitch black right and in pitch black as in the background was yeah. so there wasn't even like anything because i said in a way this kind of feels lazy because mm -hmm. you're just having one you know 3d character out in a black background which visually i'm like that could be very compelling at times but you're doing it a lot in this movie it made sense for the first time because she was out at night whatever then they did it again i was like 
Okay, you're just, you don't know what to do even. <laughs> <laughs> you give up. I can't really say anything specifically about the movie that I liked besides, you know, I liked the animation, just how good it was. Um, you know, advanced the technique is getting, and a couple songs. And when I say a couple, like two. But, you know, like, it's like, I don't really have anything else to say about this movie because the story is a very nothing story. It's just, it's, I don't think this qualifies as a story, honestly. Um, I don't know why they turned this into a movie. Doesn't really have a solid plot at all. There's people who were saying beforehand, they're like, I hope they don't give Anna powers, or I hope they don't introduce another character who has, like, winter powers, or maybe even, like, the opposite, like, fire powers and make her evil, or something like that. And I said, but honestly, all of that would have been probably much more interesting. I was hoping they didn't bring the parents back suddenly halfway through. <laughs> like they were like, alive the whole time. Why? That is, like, it's kind of funny that one thing we compliment is the fact that they didn't do something stupid we thought they were going to do. Well. Which is, we really thought that mom was coming back. I thought she was going to be on that island, and I'm like, you better not do this, because that is just going to be annoying. Like, just let him be dead. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's just, it, it was difficult. It was rough to get through. I, I wasn't I, even, like, I was kind of bored. I wasn't even really enjoying it. I was bored the whole time. And <laughs> there was only times that I got into it just because I was more into the fact that they did something so flabbergastingly stupid. Which, flabgast, flabbergastingly stupid. Yeah. Is that even a way to say it? I don't know, but that's how I felt. It oh, just was nice. like... It made me kind of drop my mouth at times where I was like, this No, is you it. literally looked at me and rolled your eyes. You're like, Oh my gosh, how many times did you do that? I should have counted. Times. And I tried my best to. It's like, I want to like this movie. Yeah. I did. I was expecting it to be one of the best movies of this year. Um, but when I heard the reviews, I was like, Okay, expect not that good. Like, I maybe they just. Because I don't know, they pulled out for Breaks the Internet so well. And they didn't do a sequel. For years, the only sequel Disney, the, the animation studio had ever done was Rescuers Down Under. And then all these years later, and Rescuers Down Under is a good sequel. It's better than the first movie. And all these years later, they're doing Ralph Breaks the Internet and Frozen 2 back to back. And I said, why are you even doing a sequel to Ralph, uh, Wreck-It Ralph? Because that movie didn't even really make that much money, I think, to warrant a sequel. But here we go. Let's see how it turns out. And it was surprisingly good. Like, way better than it needed to be like completely justified its existence and stood outside of the first movie it didn't need the first movie to exist you don't need to see the first movie to watch it you haven't seen it and you like ralph breaks the internet and then with frozen 2 i'm like i'm sorry but i'm like i'm kind of coming in with those expecta expectations that like wow maybe disney can really pull off sequels and maybe they've just always held off because they wanted to make original films and then they make this and Never in a million years in 2013 if you told me they were doing a sequel to Wreck-It Ralph and Frozen. And if, if you were to tell me, oh yeah, the Wreck-It Ralph sequel would be better, I, I just would have never believed you. There's just mm -hmm. like, to me, there's just no way. I'm like, yeah, Wreck-It Ralph is fine, but Frozen is like a is like a masterpiece. I'm like, you're, yeah, be kidding. Masterpiece. It's that good. It's a good movie. It is. It's but one of Disney's was... best. But then this is like, I just, I question it. And it's weird because it's the same people involved. It's the same almost everything. Maybe it was just too much sameness. Maybe you needed to inject something different into it to get something a little more, you know, just different in general. I just felt like they didn't really know what to do. <laughs> they're like, okay, we can do this, but where do we go with it? Because they're, it just ended up being her. I was like, but what does that teach me? Like, what is the moral? She found herself again? Yeah. Or what? <laughs> it's, I feel we've accomplished nothing. No. I feel like if you did a third movie, you could literally start it off from, like, the perspective of the first movie, because, like, that's how little happens in this movie. The only thing is, like, yeah, Elsa's in the woods now, and Anna's the queen. That's it. Like, you could start, you could make a third movie and call it a direct sequel to the first movie, and do something different, and it would feel like this one had no impact at all. Will they do a third one? I don't know. This movie's going to make a lot of money, but... Josh Gad and... What is his name? I they were down for it. In an interview I saw on TV, they are like, yeah, we'd do a third. I'm like, oh, okay. Slow down. 
I just wonder if they will. I, I, I hope they don't because I just don't even know what they'd come up with. Three seems like too many anyways. Right. It always, or one. I mean, three quills are usually the hardest to do. <sighs> Man. We just went off bashing it, but it's just, there's nothing else to say. No. This is just like, it's interesting to know just how bad this could have possibly been. It's it's funny because I just I didn't really hear as many pe people were like negative about it, but I didn't hear people, you know, bashing it to the point that I was. I didn't hear like any of that or see any of that, but I'm almost surprised because I'm like maybe or maybe I am overdoing it. You know what my favorite part was? What? Um, the Panic at the Disco um <laughs> cover of the song at the at end. The end credits. Yep. Yeah, I did like that better than the actual. Um, into the unknown during the movie um the voice that she hears is like doing this echoey um you know Do it. Sing I, it. I can't even <laughs> oh you know just some kind of voice singing like that mm -hmm. and that's what is being repeated and elsa can hear throughout the whole movie and then elsa sings this song and the beat of it the rhythm of it kind of matches that tone that voice she keeps hearing but it's not the same octave it doesn't match and it kind of bothered me because i was like this isn't matching and it's really kind of sticking out for me it would be really cool it'd be a really like neat how they would fit this into the song if it actually matched octaves but it doesn't like it's not in the same tone and it's annoying but you know for the show yourself scene they actually made it work which I was like, okay, you did it here, why couldn't you do it earlier? And then the Panic at the Disco version also did it correctly. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so I guess, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just, maybe my ear's off, but I don't know. I No, it does sound kind of weird. Anything else you have to say about this, Frozen 2? No. I've said my piece. <laughs> no. I'm, I, I'm just done. I really wish I could give you something else and not go so hard on it but wow i don't know it was just like i'm i think i'm just still in shock about how <laughs> it could go that far down well that will probably wrap it up for this discussion here on frozen 2 next time on the discussion we will be doing a different film from the walt disney animation studios library uh but we're gonna mix it up now we did the oldest one that they've ever done snow white and we did the most recent one frozen 2 and from here on out we're gonna mix it up we're gonna use a randomizer so are you ready to figure out what the next one is yeah i'm scared with the randomizer it looks like next time we will be doing the 1961 classic 101 dalmatians Thanks for listening to our rant on Frozen 2, and we'll see you next time when you wish upon a star. The worldwide phenomenon is now the number one movie in the world. Yes! Into the end. <laughs> That's normal. Frozen 2. Now playing.